Hi everyone, we're going to do the following example. Verify that the function x squared y plus y squared equals 1 is a solution of the given differential equation 2xy dx plus x squared plus 2y dy equals 0. We already know that to verify that a function is a solution to the given differential equation, we need to plug in the function and its derivatives into the equation. Before we start with the steps, let's look at both the function and the equation. So I'm going to start with the equation. Notice that this differential equation is written in the form where we don't see a derivative. Well, we see differentials. dx is here, dy is here, but no derivative form. So we'll start by adjusting this equation such that we can see the derivative. And to do that, we simply need to divide each term of this equation on both sides by dx, which is the differential of the independent variable. So I'm going to say over dx for each term. So this way I'll get 2xy plus x squared plus 2y dy dx equals 0. So the equation is ready to go, but let's look at the given function. Notice that this function is not given to us in the form y equals and then an expression in terms of x. In other words, y is not by itself. So I made this note here. And by the way, this form of the equation when y is by itself is called explicit form or explicit function. When we don't have that form, but looking at something like our function where, where x and y are involved in the same expression, this form of a function is called implicit. Or I can say that this is implicit function. And it's important to know that for many functions, it's pretty easy to go from the implicit form to the explicit form. In other words, to get y by itself. But for some functions, and that's our example, going from the implicit form to the explicit form may not be that easy. And when it comes to integration, because remember, we have to integrate the function so that we can plug it into our equation. In this case, we'll have to apply implicit differentiation. And I'm going to remind you how it works. So to apply the implicit differentiation, we have to take derivative of each side. So I'll have d dx of the left hand side and the derivative of the right hand side. Okay, so let's focus on the left hand side. On the left hand side, I have derivative of a sum. We know that derivative of a sum is the same as the sum of derivatives. In other words, it's going to be d dx of x squared y plus the derivative of y squared. And on the right hand side, I'll just keep it for now as the derivative of 1. Now, this is what's important to know about implicit differentiation. y is dependent variable and x is independent variable. So y represents a function. So when you think function, um, I like to think about it as an expression. So y is not just variable y, but it represents some kind of expression, function. Um, so when I look at uh, or trying to differentiate this expression, first of all, I need to realize that I'm looking at the product, right? So it's x squared times y. Well, that means that I have to use product rule. Okay, so I made a few notes here. Now, product rule. According to the product rule, we have to take the first factor, well, that is x squared, and it has to be multiplied by the derivative of the second factor. Now, our second factor is a function. So the way I'm going to write its derivative is dy dx. That is the derivative of function y, right, with respect to x. Okay, plus, and again, I'm following the product rule. Plus, then I have to take the second factor, 
well, that's just y, and multiply it by the derivative of the first factor. Well, in this case, it's x squared is just an independent variable, so derivative of x squared is 2x times 2x. So I made a note of the formula that I just used, just in case you need to refresh the product rule. So if f for us is x squared, and then um, y is like g in this formula. Okay, so that's the product rule. We will simplify it in the next step. Now let's move on to the next derivative. It's derivative of y squared. Again, y is a function. y itself is a function. And then that function is raised to power. So I can say it's our function y within the quadratic function. So that's going to be a situation where we have to apply the chain rule. Chain rule. So remember with the chain rule, first we apply the outer function, or I should say the derivative of the outer functions. So the outer function is the squared function, and it's like something to the second power. Well, the derivative of that is we have to put power in the front, 2, and then reduce it by 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1, so it's just 2y. And then multiply it by the derivative of the inner function. Well, the inner function is y, and derivative of that is simply dy dx. Since we don't have the explicit form of the function y, we don't really have anything to write except as just general dy dx for the derivative of function y. So like that. And that's basically the idea of implicit differentiation. That that's how you approach it. So that was the left hand side. Now the right hand side is just the derivative of the constant, which is always zero. Okay, so next we'll simplify the result. I have um, again x squared dy dx plus 2, I'll put 2xy plus 2y dy dx equals 0. And remember, so what is our goal? Our goal is to plug in um, our function or its derivatives or both into the equation. What we're going to focus on right now is I go back to the equation. Um, I will focus on finding the derivative of the function so I can place it here. And from what I got, um, I will be able to find the derivative. So derivative of our function is dy dx. And we can see it in two different terms. So how do I find what dy dx equals to? Well, I'll just make some algebraic manipulations here. What I'll do, I'll move term 2xy to the other side. So in other words, I'll, I'll subtract it. Minus 2xy on each side. I have x squared dy dx plus 2y dy dx equals negative 2xy. And now my goal is to find out what dy dx equals to, right? So to get that, I'll first factor out dy dx on the left, and then I'll get it by itself. So if I pull out dy dx, I'll get x squared plus 2y, right? x squared plus 2y equals negative 2xy. And you probably know what to do next is just simply dividing each side by x squared plus 2y. Okay, so that goes away. Here it is. We found the derivative. Even though the function was given to us in the implicit form, we were able to find its derivative using implicit differentiation. dy dx equals negative 2xy over x squared plus 2y. And that is what we're going to plug into our equation. So with the implicit function, plugging in just the derivative will be enough to show that um, that function is the solution to the equation. So I'm going to take the equation. I will just want to remind you what it is right here. That's our equation. Remember, we adjusted a little bit, but yeah, that's the one we're going to use. Okay, um, I guess I can start or continue here. So 2xy. I'm copying the equation plus x squared plus 2y. And now for dy dx, I'm plugging in the result of that differentiation. So we found that dy dx equals a negative 2xy over x squared plus 2y equals 0. That is dy dx. 
Okay, uh, let's let's confirm that that's an identity. As you can see, x squared plus 2y cancels. And we're left with 2xy minus 2xy. Is that 0? Yes. 0 equals 0. That's an identity. And that confirms that the given implicit function is the solution of the equation. So x squared y plus y squared equals 1 is the solution. So this example specifically shows what do you do when the function is given in the implicit form and it's hard um, to put it in the explicit form for finding derivatives. Use implicit differentiation. And I wanted to ask a follow-up question. How about different function? x squared y plus y squared equals 2. Is that a solution? What do you think? So based on what we just saw and on the result and based on the original function that we checked, which is the solution, um, what would you say? Well, technically, to check that, we would have to go through the same process, but since the only difference here is that no number on the right-hand side, and we already know what happens when we you know, apply derivative to the right-hand side, we get zero, right? So it means it doesn't matter you know, if it's two here, I still get same result here, and you know, I will end up with identity at the end, um, right? So that two on the right-hand side really does not, does not make any difference. So yes. And then I'm going to continue. How about x squared y plus y squared equals 3 or equals negative 5? Are those solutions? Well, yes, they are for the exactly the same reasoning, right? So that right-hand side constant will not make the difference. So yes. But how many numbers like that I can try? Well, I'm sure you say in your mind, well, infinite many, right? Now I can I can see that can be any number on the right hand side, and still that's going to be solution to that same equation we were we were given from the beginning. So what I can do, I can write this idea the following way. I can write that x squared y plus y squared l equals any constant c, any real number c, right? Um, that's always going to be solution. And that constant C is called arbitrary constant, or we also call it parameter. So this expression, or this equation, represents infinitely many options for what the solution to that differential equation can be, right? And we say that this represents, or that's called, a family of solutions. Okay, here it is. So this is called a family of solutions. Well, family, I think it's a good word because as I start taking different, uh, picking different values of C, all those will be solutions and they will, they will be different, but they will look alike, right? Exactly like in a family. So family of solutions represents or describes infinitely many solutions of, of the given equation. And as we continue with studying differential equations and start actually solving differential equations, most of the time we'll have to find family of solutions. And all those specific solutions that come from the family, they also have a name. They're called particular solutions. So particular solutions don't have an arbitrary parameter. Okay, so these are a few more basic definitions um, related to differential equations.